All right, so uh, made it home. This is where uh, Route 66 ends. Actually, it's a few blocks up. Uh, still too tired to walk up. <laughs> but this is Santa Monica. This is the end of the road of Route 66, where I live. So it's the end of the road for me. Uh, of course, the Jodes didn't end up down here. They ended up in Arvin, in Weed Patch, which is uh, where we were at yesterday. Um, so since I had last posted from the farm, we, uh, we went over to uh, the Cal State Bakersfield, and they had this beautiful reception for us uh, in this library. There was like 200 plus people showed up. It was amazing. And they... Uh, came to listen to Octavio and Patricia and I and, and Colleen share our experiences out on the road on a panel and we shared some of the videos and uh, it was really quite lovely and uh, really exciting that that many people showed up. It was really, really cool. High schoolers came too, a whole class of uh, juniors from the high school reading. Great Wrath came, it was really cool to meet them. and. Uh, a few of them even stuck around and got their picture taken with us. <laughs> so that was cool. Um, and then, yeah, we uh, headed off to Weed Patch to the Federal Migrant Camp, which is the same exact camp that's in the book that the Jodes went to, the fictional family, uh, real camp. And, uh, you know, it was different. It was different being there. It's not... Well, it's certainly not the way I'm used to living. I don't think many people that I know know what it's like to live like that. It's not terrible. It's clean and protected, and um, but sure is different. And, uh, we got to speak of some people there, um, a few migrant workers, and we met this one guy, Jorge, who is a uh, artist, a painter, and he's also a poet. And he was amazing, actually did some spoken word performance for us for the camera uh, about the camp, about growing up there and about uh, this girl he had fallen in love with there, the love of his life. And uh, he lost her when his, her family moved on to wherever else they were going to go work. You know, that's sort of the way it goes. And uh, yeah, it was, um, I think actually maybe it was, what was so strange about being there was that it was our last day. And to be honest, it's been really hard to let everybody go let this trip go. Uh, really quite sad about it. Uh, and I, I know everybody else is too. You spend 10, 11 days on the road with a bunch of people, whether you know them well or not, you certainly get to know them. And you make bonds and, you know, I'm so grateful that I got to do this trip and uh, yeah, I'm really going to miss everybody. This is one of the hardest things I've ever done, to be honest. Um, having a full production and then also doing post-production at the same time so we can get some videos out. Not these iPhone videos, but the other ones. Um, you know, having Nicholas Tran, our amazing editor and camera. He does camera as well right there. He's working with Tom, our cinematographer. And, uh, but uh, you know, Nick was locked up in the RV editing almost the entire time with the windows shut. So, you know, uh, I am really impressed with all the guys uh, and I couldn't be any luckier to be able to work with such amazing people. Um, Tom and Ryan and Daniel and Nick. It, it was, I mean, seriously, it, it's... I'm really, really lucky to work with these guys. There's some kids over there. <laughs> um, people have been asking, we got asked a few times what we were... Uh, what we remember most, what we got the most out of this trip. And the thing that really struck me the most was um, the terrain, how it changed. You know, how Oklahoma doesn't look anything like Texas, and how Texas doesn't look really anything like New Mexico. New Mexico and Arizona are totally different. California certainly is way different. It was such a contrast. I mean, we went through, in Oklahoma, we went through the craziest lightning and thunderstorm I've ever experienced in my life. I mean, I don't know how to explain this, but it was like six or seven hours long, all night long. And it was like the thunder cloud was right above the cabin, maybe two feet above it. And it just like every four seconds, there'd be another 
bolt of lightning and the loudest thunder. It was terrifying. <laughs> there was tornado uh, warnings. <laughs> it was crazy. Texas, Texas was big and beautiful and we had beautiful sunsets and we were, the sky was clear and we were able to shoot the stars. It was windy though, really windy in Texas. Uh, in New Mexico with all the rock formations and uh, and that's where Route 66 seemed to be really dead. You know, a lot of the ghost towns were at. Uh, and then we get into Arizona, Flagstaff, up into the mountains, and it's snowing, <laughs> freezing cold, black ice on the highway, you know, getting that RV down the highway in the rain and the sleet and the snow. And then the following day, we head into California, and we take 66 over these crazy, windy mountains. I mean, some of the windiest mountains, I think I explained this the other day, it was, it, it was insanity that we even drove over those things and it was so hot when we get to California and it's the hot warm sun again and uh, so all the, the the diversity of the land and of the environment was really what struck me and uh, the way it looks and the way it feels and the way it smells and you know all the even the atmosphere changes the humidity is different I was thinking a lot about the families that crossed over during the depression and those little jalopies doing what 25 miles an hour no air conditioning, no protection from the elements. I don't even think they had doors on them. Somebody told me that sometimes they would have nowhere to sleep, so they would pull their jalopy over on the side of the road, and somebody would sleep under it, and somebody would sleep inside of it, and somebody would sleep on top of it if it wasn't raining. And through all those elements, I mean, you know, they were in some of the hottest places in America, and then up high in the cold, and up on those cliffs, and through the beautiful valleys and then I get to California and it's these rolling hills and really quite beautiful. I'm wondering if given their situations they were able to ever take a moment and appreciate the beauty or if that's just something that we get to appreciate now because we're not going through the starvation and the desperation that they were going through. So, anyway, this is pretty long-winded. So, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll leave you guys with this uh, this post. This should be the last I leave. Uh, I have a lot of editing to do. Uh, we shot a lot. We had seven cameras rolling, so you can imagine how much footage we have. Uh, and, yeah, come see us in May. 2014 for the uh, Steinbeck Festival. Uh, Octavio and Patricia, myself, the crew, uh, Daniel, Tom, Ryan, and uh, Nick will be there. Of course, Elizabeth will be there, and Colleen, and Lori, and Marcos, everybody who's on the trip, and even uh, Philippe, who drove the RV from California to Oklahoma for us. So uh, that's in 2014. Mark your calendars. We'll all be in Salinas for the festival and showing off what we made. And uh, Thank you for following the blog, and uh, be sure to read through all of it. There's some amazing photographs in there. Octavio and Patricia and, and uh, Elizabeth and Marcos have been posting pictures and written written blogs. And uh, there's an airport nearby. Um, yeah, check it all out. I think you'll enjoy it. And uh, again, thanks for following us. Uh, I think I'm gonna go curl up with an orange cat and go to sleep. Bye.